So 8, 2, and 3 are going to be combined here, um, and they both deal with uh, how to prove that triangles are similar, and then if they are similar, how their parts uh, relate to each other. So the first thing is that uh, you don't need all six uh, corresponding parts of triangles in order to show that they're similar. So you don't need to show that all three pairs of angles are equal and all three pairs of sides are proportional. Um, there's th three patterns that you need to uh, be familiar with. The first is uh, the AA similarity pattern, which is uh, abbreviated AA similarity. And so if this is the case, all you need to do is see that two pairs of uh, corresponding angles are equal. If that's the case, then you know that the triangles are similar. So uh, two triangles are similar if they have two pair of angles that are congruent. Okay? And so um, if you just see these two pairs of, of angles congruent, then you know that triangle ABC is similar to A has the one tick mark corresponding to point D, B has the two tick marks corresponding to vertex E, and then C and F have no tick marks, and those will correspond. So by AA similarity, those are similar triangles. Once you have that they're similar triangles, then we use the properties of similar polygons. All corresponding angles are equal, and all corresponding sides are proportional. So if you're looking at these uh, types of problems where this will come into play, okay, so uh, what you see right here is if we take this first example, we're given that these two angles are equal. And you also know that this pair of corresponding angle, or these pair of vertical angles right here are also equal. And so by AA similarity, you know these are um, two uh, similar triangles. And so if you know that triangle ABC is similar to triangle, again, A is the one tick mark that corresponds with E. Uh, C is the two, or B is the no tick marks that corresponds with D and then C and C are the same uh, angle with two tick marks. So these are your um, similar triangles. And so if you want to find the side X, so the side X corresponds to X is AC in the larger triangle, so that's going to correspond to EC. So if we find the length for EC, which is 20, you know that X over 20 is equal to the known ratio. Well. You have both of the remaining sides in the large triangle, but all you have is side DE of the smaller triangle. So again, DE is the first two letters, so A and B are uh, what that corresponds to. So uh, A to B is this length of 63, uh, is to ED, uh, which again was 45. And so this gives you your um, ratios, set them equal and solve. And so here if we solve for X, multiply both sides by 20 and we get our calculated value uh, here of uh, 63 over 45 times 20. And that gives you your answer of 28. You could have entered your answer as a calculation as well, okay, but either of those forms would be acceptable. All right, second example here, uh, you see that these lines are parallel which means that corresponding angles are equal, right? So this angle and this angle are equal. These two angles are equal. And so right there you have your AA similarity. Um, you could have also thought of it as just one of those pairs of angles, and then both of these triangles also share this common angle down here. So once again, you would have AA similarity by having two um, pair of angles that are equal. Either way, once you find this out, uh, what you can do is you can solve for your corresponding parts. Notice these triangles are oriented in the same uh, direction, so even though there's no points to label, we see that X corresponds to this corresponding length 36 in the same ratio that uh, we have this whole side of the large triangle, which is 35, over its corresponding piece in the smaller triangle, which is 20. And so once again, if we multiply both sides by 36, we can solve for our x value. Uh, you can either uh, enter this whole uh, calculation, or once again, if you write uh, 35 over 20 times 36, 
you would get your answer to be 63 uh, for that value. And the final question here, uh, once again, you're told that YP and ZS are parallel, so similar to the previous question. Okay, and so if that's the case, you have these corresponding angles that are equal plus the shared angle. So by AA similarity, you're dealing with similar triangles. And so once again, uh, if you start to label what you have, YP is 30, ZS is 23, and ZQ is 13. And so what you want to do is you want to find this YQ value. So uh, a couple different ways that, uh, or the, the way that you can think about uh, what that is. We'll just call that our unknown, which I'll call X. And so if we take our corresponding piece, X is 2. So again, here's X. X corresponds to this smaller portion, 13, this of the smaller triangle. And then we have our known ratios, which are these two sides uh, here. So that's 30 is to 23. So that is the proportion that we set up. Multiply both sides by 13. So once again, you could enter your calculation as it is, or you can perform the calculation and enter the calculated value. Uh, if you do that, you get approximately 16.96. But again, you could have entered this full calculation as well. 2 was uh, just the AA similarity. 8.3 is going to introduce the remaining two um, similarity patterns for triangles, and that is SSS and SAS. So the SSS similarity pattern is that if all three sides of two triangles are proportional, then the triangles themselves are similar. And so two triangles are similar if all three pair sides have the same ratio or are proportional. Okay, so if we are looking at, uh, let's say, x, y, and z here for the sides of this triangle, if this is uh, n times some multiplier n times x, that same multiplier times y, and that same multiplier times z, then you know that these have to be similar triangles. And so ABC is similar to, again, A is opposite the z, just with a um, dilution factor of n, so that corresponds to R. Um, B corresponds to S, and C corresponds to T by using proportional sides, so SSS similarity. And SAS similarity uh, is, uh, again, the same idea, combining the two. So you have two pair of sides that are proportional, and the included angle is equal. And if that's the case, then the two triangles are uh, similar to each other. So two triangles are similar if two pair of sides are proportional, and the included angle are congruent to each other. So again, that's the, the two S's and the A. So here we have this pair of angles that are equal. So if we know that one side, let's say, uh, is a length A, and for the corresponding triangle, it's M times A, and then the other side is B, and in the other triangle, it's M times B to get the larger side. Uh, then you know that these are two similar triangles. So again, triangle X, Y, C is similar to X corresponds to M, Y corresponds to N, and, and T corresponds to Z. And that would be by the SAS similarity pattern. Uh, two, two pair of sides are proportional and the included angles are equal. So if we're going to use, uh, we're going to view all three patterns here, uh, looking for all three patterns to see if these triangles are similar. Okay. So here we want to find what value of x would make these similar, which would be that uh, 
Uh, you can see again, look at how the statement's written. A corresponds to D, B corresponds to E, and C corresponds to F. Notice these are all uh, already arranged in the same orientation, so visually we're good. We can just uh, relate to the corresponding pieces. And so if we take uh, one of the lengths with X, and again, it can be either one. I'll tend to start with the larger one if I can. So 7 times X minus 4. That side length corresponds to this side of 13 in the other triangle. And in order for that to be true, then the uh, corresponding ratios would have to be the same. And you can, you can compare it to either other ratio. Okay, so the fact that 6 and 42, this is an easier comparison. Uh, the triangle with the 7 times uh, x minus 4 has the side of 42 to the other triangle's 6. And so here, if we multiply both sides by 13 and simplify, uh, 6 goes into 42 7 times. Divide by 7, the 7's cancel. Add 4 to both sides. And so you see that x is equal to 13 plus 4, or 17. Now, you could have used uh, either of these. So this isn't the only form that you could have solved. Uh, we could have solved this side first. So we could have taken x minus 8 over its corresponding piece, 63. Set that equal to, again, the same ratio, uh, 6 is the side of the triangle in or the side in the same triangle as x minus 8 so that goes on top and that corresponds to 42 and so if we multiply both sides by 63 here we get x minus 8 is equal to 6 goes into 42 7 times 7 goes into 63 9 add 8 to both sides and we would get x is equal to 17 uh, using that pair of angle or that pair of sides as well If we come up here, okay, uh, if you're given that uh, BIG is similar to MOP and you want to find what Y uh, is equal to, and you can set up your uh, similar triangles here. You just need to uh, figure out which ones are oriented. So I'm going to redraw my smaller triangle in the same orientation. So M corresponds to B, so B is going to go here. O corresponds to I, so I is going to go down here, which leaves G. And if I take their side length, so IG is 200, label that. DG is uh, 216, so label that. And what I now have is this opportunity to set up my ratios. So Y is to 200 as our known ratios. 14.04 is to 2.16. And so it's just a matter of solving. Once again, I can enter my answer just as this calculation. Okay, but if I uh, type that in, I get my length of x, sorry, the length of y uh, to be 1300. And so that would be my answer. Final one, same idea. You're told that these are similar triangles. So I can label it the same way. I'm going to orient my figures in the same direction once again. So uh, M and B correspond. So B labeled up here once again. O and I, and then G and P. So here's my figure. I'll mark what I have. So um, BG is 48, IG is 42, and DI is my length V. And so this is what I'm solving for here. So I'm going to take my length V corresponds to 24 in the same ratio as I have my longest side here. So 48 is to 72. And if I simplify, or if I isolate and solve for V, I get my calculation, uh, 48 over 72 times 24, and that leaves me with 16. And once again, I could have entered my answer as this calculation, 
for the calculated value. The uh, last the last type of questions that I want to uh, look at here are the type of questions that you would uh, likely see on right. so the last type of questions uh, is again just putting everything together the type of uh, questions that you can expect to uh, see similar triangles being used to solve so first from story problem standpoint um, if you have uh, objects casting shadows the assumption is that if you have a flagpole that's casting a shadow and uh, a tree nearby that's casting a shadow what you're assuming is that the sun is coming from this same angle this is called the angle of elevation from here to here and so that's going to be the same it doesn't matter what it is uh, since the the angle up to the sun is the same for both of these so you have this right angle and you have the angle of elevation that gives you two angles meaning these are similar triangles and so if you know that the flagpole casts a 17 foot shadow a nearby tree casts a 39 foot shadow and you know that the tree stands 15 feet tall what you can do is you can find the length of this or the height of this unknown flagpole by uh, setting up and relating these corresponding parts so the side H corresponds to 15 in the same ratio as 17 corresponds to this shadow length 39 and so if you just calculate your answer you get your solution here which would be uh, 17 over 39 times 15 and so the height of that pole is going to be uh, 6.54 approximately or you can leave it as this calculation so either of those would be acceptable answers <coughs> In the next uh, problem, once again, you're uh, finding all the corresponding parts to this. I would again redraw my figures so that they're facing the same orientation. So M and, and B correspond. So M means B is going to be up here. O and I. So I'll write I here and G here. And if I relabel what I have, so BI is V. Uh, IG is 56. Uh, BG is 64. I have this angle G is 32 and the angle uh, O down here I can go ahead and kind of relate these corresponding pieces so if I look at just these triangles what I do uh, what I can see is that um, this angle X is going to be formed by taking the triangle sum so x is 180 minus the two given angles 110 and 32 and so if I calculate that 180 minus 110 and 32 that's going to leave uh, a measure of 38 degrees again you can leave your answer as a calculation if you wanted to as well okay, and then the other pieces are the side lengths and so if I look for V V corresponds to 24 in the same known ratio well the only known ratio I have are these two longest sides so in V the corresponding side is 64 and in the other triangle 96 and so once again I can leave my answer as a calculation here or I can calculate uh, 64 over 96 times 24 so that leaves V is 16 Or the calculation if we look at W um, W is this measure which I already established was 110 by using the corresponding uh, parts uh, if similar if two similar triangles the corresponding angles are equal so W would be 110 degrees same 
and then finally y y is this length y corresponds to 56 in the same ratio as our known value so here since we started with y we'll use 96 over its corresponding length 64. So if we solve both of these, multiply both sides by 56, you can either leave your calculation or if you take 96 divided by 64 and multiply that by 56, you'll get your answer for y, which again is 84 or the calculation here. All right, the final problem <clears throat> down here. Again, you want to find what value of x is going to make these two triangles similar. Okay, and so uh, when you are looking at these measures, um, you need to be able to see uh, x is this dc. So dc are the first and last. So that's going to correspond to a and c. So being able to match up what your corresponding pieces are, x over 32 is equal to the known ratios. Well, even though we're only given two other side lengths, let's verify that they are um, the corresponding pieces as well. So E and C are the last two letters. Does that correspond to B and C, the last two letters? Yes, it does. And so if we take the tri triangle from, or the measure from the smaller triangle, since we started with X, we start with 11 over its corresponding measure, 23. And then it's just a matter of calculating. And so you can enter your answer as the calculation 11 over 23 times 32, which gives you 15.30. Or you can leave it as this calculation, and that would be your solution. We see on the SAT especially, right? and that is uh, here, uh, if you are looking at um, They'll generally be right triangle problems often uh, related to trig ratios. Okay? And so here, if you're being told that you have these two right triangles and it tells you that RST uh, is similar to UVW. Okay? Now, if you know these are right triangles, the uh, hypotenuse has to be the longest side, right? So if you were to sketch this triangle and this triangle, you know that the hypotenuse has to be this longest side, TR. So if I just call uh, one of them T to R and label that as 102, that means that my re remaining side, S, would give me ST is 48 and SR is 90. So I could label one of my figures that way. Okay, and so now I know it's similar to R corresponds to U. So R and U are located in the same orientation. V corresponds to S, so V would be the right angle. W corresponds to T, so W would be this corresponding angle up here. Okay, and so it wants you to find the cosine of W. Well, the cosine is a ratio of, so Katoa, so here's cosine. Uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. We'll notice that adjacent over hypotenuse in its similar triangle has to have the same ratios. So it's going to be 48 over 102. And if you just reduce that fraction, so again, hit this fraction bar to give the fraction form, you get your answer to be 8 over 17. But it's using trig ratios along with similar triangles uh, for to answer that question. All right. See if you can find the, the one right below. Again, just using right triangles, this time not trig ratios, but it is a pretty straightforward right triangle concept. Can you find the answer? So P and S aligned together, Q and T aligned together. So these are already oriented in the, the right uh, directions to show visually that these are similar. You're told that the uh, angle Q is 58 degrees. That means the angle T will also be 58 degrees. They want you to find what angle S is. Well, angle S is the other acute angle uh, there. And so the two acute angles in a triangle add up to 90. So 90 minus 58 is going to give you your solution, which would be 32 for that problem. Okay, next uh, figure when we're looking at this. Again, you have uh, a triangle XYZ. 
is similar to triangle um, RST. So I'm going to align them together. So uh, R aligns with X, S aligns with the Y, T aligns with the Z. And I know that uh, here that 3 times XY is equal to RS. And so um, if you see this, so RS is actually going to be a, a larger triangle. So these aren't really to scale here, but uh, I'll mark that in case we need it. And then the final thing uh, would be uh, that you are told that Z is 48 degrees. And so that means that T is also going to be 48 degrees. Well, that's all you need to know for this problem, right? When two triangles are similar, their corresponding angles are equal. The way that these match up uh, in these orientations shows that you have equal angles. So that's going to equal T. And then the last uh, problem here, uh, looking at these, if you have L, LMN and RST, so again, if we just uh, take these two triangles, we're going to, um, you're uh, told you want to show that LMN, so LMN is similar to RST, so I'm going to um, match those measurements. Okay, and it says that L and R each have 40 degree angles, so I'm going to mark those. Uh, LN is 40 and RT is 8. Which additional piece of information would be sufficient to show that? Well, again, we want to test these different possibilities. Right now, what we have is one pair of angles, and we have a pair of sides with a ratio that is 8 times what gives you 45. So the dilation factor as, that's going to map those on is 5 times that. Okay, so if MN and ST are each 6, this doesn't match what we would expect, right? This would be need to be 6 and 30, so that's not going to work. If we test the next possibility, the measure of angle M and T, so if M is 60 and T is 80, would that work? Well, if that was the case, then N would be 80 and S would also be 60. 60 plus 40 plus 80 is 180. 60 plus 40 plus 80. So yes, that's the one that would work. Okay, and you have your relationship. Okay, you could check the other ones and test it. Um, uh, you will see that um, they won't necessarily guarantee uh, the patterns. Okay, if you come back and let's say we test these other patterns here. Okay, if we test, uh, if MN is 30 and ST is 6, we do have a, a ratio of, of 1 to 5, but this isn't one of the patterns, right? This is the pattern of SSA similarity. There is no SSA. It's either SAS uh, or AA, so that wouldn't be enough. And then finally, the measures of M and T. Uh, if M is 60 and T is 60, again, that's not going to give you 180 degrees, right? That'll give you 160 degrees, not enough for the triangle. So that one uh, is eliminated also.